This is New York firefighter Raphael Poirier for Firehouse Subs. Every day, a part of every sub you buy at Firehouse Subs helps provide life-saving equipment for first responders. And now, for a limited time, they're introducing the Daily Sub Special. Every day, get a medium sub of the day for just $5.55. They kick it off with Meatball Monday and finish it off with Italian Sunday with something delicious every day in between for just $5.55. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Tap the banner now to learn more. Blog Talk Radio. Yo, what's her good with it? This your boy, Big Prodigy, South Central Cartel General. I'm kicking back. Checking out my homeboys on Off The Cuff Radio. Y'all motherfuckers better come on in. Fuck yeah, I gotta put this shit on right here. Take the coke money and invest in computers. Trying to reach the next level. Rolex with the ice bezel. Coming through the ghetto in the Porsche Carrera. For now, I play the back of the cruiser. Light up the sack with three time losers. Pour out some beer. Bust off the Ruger. Ladies and gentlemen, bullets to leave you trembling. Shooking up. I got my Cuban mommy cooking up. We got it all from here on the fish scale. New York to Israel. Get knocked, I'm getting bare. My style is flashy like a five of strobes. Going around the Low. Honey's wearing silk robes, time to flip the strip, bust the whip, let you with the chip, dark blue with my trunk dip, to the bed, test me if you can, I'm still transport with my man on the Peter Pan, quick to get there, bury the bricks in the sand, they think I want to ten, I'm waiting on the hundred grand, so I can hit them over, take a shower, head back to the airport, and now that money in the tower, stash box with the kick. L to the O to the X, you'll see. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I'm no thing. You'll see. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I'm no thing. Change but the rain since I got the M. Dot on your head, take all your strength. Yeah, I'm in it with the green. I get up in your scenes while you sunning me like a nigga from Queens. My tape and your dude could set front of me. Wanna get in front of me, player? You can't get none of me. Better off sunning me with hot slugs numbing me. Cause you and I both know the flow is coming, big. When you want it now or later, I get mine and slide like a fresh pair of gators. With my mega click involved with Montega bricks. Niggas mega sick, and you know we roll mega thick. Up north when they bust your man in the custom van. Interrupts your plan, now it's back to grand. Damn, ain't that something? All that's in front. What you gon' do? Nothing. So let's keep things rationalized. Everything I write but a nationalized. I'm into getting money, twisting honey. Niggas is buying coops while you on the stoop looking funny. I'm a scorer, shorty love the whole aura. Pussy wasn't all that, that's why I never call her. It's all about quick flips and fat nicks. Gats with mad clips, TVs in your whip. My style tight like Gotti when I touch you. See the Chicati or Versace joints with the buckle. Get the facts, I'm trying to get the beamer with the hatch. Cop one for my man, so I shit match. Running around all crazy, twisting honey's back. And breaking niggas that come to gamble with small stacks. Really though, screw y'all, I never knew y'all. They click me like yellow lights, I'm running through y'all. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> you <know? laughs> you know? Hard as it is to make a buck, I ain't trying to get stuck. So I'ma keep hands in the beef like I don't give a fuck. It's all about respect, tech nines and tapes. Big house in Italy in the yard where honey's crushing great. So I get down to my steam room and give a long prayer. Knowing that one day I'll be chic, Luciana May. Fatigued out in my house or office. When I'm spot, big crooked cops can't talk shit to the town support. Mm-hmm. My staff rolling in jacks, cruises and coops. Giving parades and holding rallies for the life of groups. Do what you gonna do when we come for you. The same thing you been doing. I screw and bubblegum chewing, I'm me and my men just pursuing. Who you think 
the ladies in Hampton, rockin' dancing while I'm dancing in the mansion. So cheers to the life of the ice in your chains and your watches. And you'll see how we lie this time. I'm not finished. Yet. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? You'll see. <laughs> you'll see. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Yo, uh, uh, niggas talking it but ain't living it. Crystal pop and sipping it. Mom acts and lizard shit. Data chunk bitch. Rolling blunts with the williest of the willy. Hits like top M1 and 9 milli. Stories like a motherfucker. Okay. Model bitches wondering if I'ma fuck with her. She know I treat my bitches like Gabbana. Dozy and Gabbana dripping. Big Papa never slipping. Ace class diamond shining. Dinner with wifey whining, dining. Smoking cigars in Bogota with Colombian niggas in Panama and N Greek getting and shit. Games we play, life ended. Bitches bending over with ease. Four pair mosquito jeans and down the Karen tank top. I got your bank stop. Singles on top. Benjamins under the rest of them. Advancing from duplex to mansions. Stash and keys. Hiding G's overseas. BCRs in my beat. Game elevate money I make get the stocks and real estate, bitch. Jet skiing in the Caribbean, white sand, discussing plans with my man. Dark blue land, smoke tint, chrome rims in the system that leave my rear views trembling. What you gonna do when Papa catch your attitude? Drop to your knees and show gratitude. Kiss my ring, it's a Frank White thing. I stay potent, bitch devoted. Take my dick and deep throw it. Like shit, 
with my nocturnal vibes and editorial clips is no comparison. I embarrassment and cause microphone harassment. Here's where the fan terrors spin. I'm hit, Brit, the sight buddies look alike. Them C's claiming they rock mics like night to day. So I'm unable to have more to perform. I explode on the mic like C4. I eliminate four microphones. Leaves a limited amount of opponents. Step on the microphone, I shown you. Oh, and oh, no win situation. In the, in the gladiation, now they face it. Last night I had a dream that it just made me realize that folks don't give a damn about me.
between Snoop and an unnamed. Y'all, it's your boy King Harry, the ruler. You're nine off the cuff radio. I got my own girl, Mr. Chiller, in the building. What it do? What it do? Yeah, yeah, we got a double header going down. We got our girl on the line, SKJ, and we got my man, Westside Fane. He's going to be joining us in another hour. So before we get started, start the call number is 1619924073. We give it away to Nate Doll Collection and to Mr. Chiller. Do you have anything you want to give away? Yes, I sure do. First, we want to say Happy, Happy Memorial, Memorial Day. Day to everybody listening and the host, of course. And there I want go. to let everybody know I got to give a big shout out right now to the family of LRT Air Conditioning and Maintenance. I have to say they do a great job over there. They offer great customer service, and they are offering a deal right now to all of our listeners. If you call in to 409-256-6008, once again, 409-256-6008, and you tell them that Ms. Cintilla of Off the Cup Radio sent you, they will give you $10 off of your first, very first time that you call, whatever service they're giving, and then... If you give them a great review on their website and give them a five-star, you'll get $20 off the next time they come back. Now, that's a great deal because half of y'all trying to beat this heat, and when it comes wintertime, y'all not, y'all going to need to get in some heat. So I'm just letting y'all know. Call your boys, and if you need the number after this, just hit me up and listen to the replay. There you have it. You heard, you heard it from the best of us. We give it away a lot. We want y'all to feel appreciated. So what we gonna do now? We are gonna bring in the guest of the one of the guests of the first hour. We'll go by the name of SKJ. Let me see if we can get her online. You there? Man, Blow Talk been acting all funny style all day. That's that Friday. Friday. Hello. Yeah, hold on. What we gonna yeah, do now? Of course. There we go. There we go. What it do? Hey. Hey, how you doing tonight? How you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, you playing. Hey, before we get started, you may want to you may put your phone off speaker. Speaker. Hold on. Hello. Yeah, that's much better. Is that? And that was my speaker too, probably. Lord. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think her call dropped. We have a little technical difficulty, but she'll call back shortly. And Blog Talk been acting up a little bit funny Blog style. Blog Talk. Yeah, y'all gotta get it together, man. We trying to help oh, y'all yeah. get some business. We've been referring y'all and this how y'all repay us? Damn it. It's like this is the like this is the things we get. Yeah, she gonna call back shortly. They be giving us a little bit of, of a hassle. They even had a little hassle trying to get on get on the show. They trying to treat me. Because you talk about out. Trump. <laughs> they trying to give me a deal with him. Shoot. Shoot. If they gonna get you a deal in Canada, you keep playing. Look how they doing you on this radio show. Hold on, let me try to. I think she's here right here. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Much better. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That long talk gives us a little trouble right now, but we we in the building right now. We got the lovely Miss okay. SKJ. <laughs> and we're going to get this thing started. And first of all, we want to start it off. Like, how are you doing tonight? I'm cool, Just got out of the studio first. Recording this song for my soundtrack and my documentary. So it should be working. Breaking up a little bit, Mama. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. 
Can you hear me better now? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, I finish? said I'm good. Just came out the studio from recording, so we just joined it right now. Uh-huh. Is, this, is this, for new, this for a new up and coming project? Say it again. It's for an up and coming project? Yeah, for my documentary through my eyes. When is that coming out? Um, it's scheduled to be released in July, but we're starting promo for it right now. It's going to piggyback off the All Eyes on Me. Oh, man. That's what's up. Hard-working woman, y'all see that? Women work hard, too, damn it. <laughs> and what people don't know is that SKJ, she been in the media game for a while because I remember looking at some old videos she had. She was interviewing Jim Jones and True Life and all these cats. So she been in the game for a minute getting on this media stuff probably before even us. Yeah, yeah. I'm real strong in branding and um and PR work. That's my second passion, I guess. <laughs> That's what's up. So can I ask you a question? Being being yeah. a woman in the whole game, being being a woman is it do you see a difference? And, and and how hard you have to work or the benefits you get or, you know, what have you. The, is there a difference between you and the men around you that you can see? I mean, yeah, you just got to, you know, it, it's harder for women in this industry. This is really a man's game. So any woman that succeeded, you know, I always uh, give them props because you really got to basically take your respect. You got to you gotta demand your respect. You know, sometimes women get it hard to where the politics in the game, they won't press a guy the way they'll press a woman or disrespect a guy the way they disrespect a woman. So it's, like, really different. Well, much props to you for, for making it in and lasting so long because I definitely give you much respect. I, I feel the same way just from the outside of looking in and trying to do a little bit. I ain't got where you got but at the end of the day, I definitely give you props because you held on to it and you made a way and, and you probably inspire a lot more people than you even know. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. It, it is a lot of work. It's hard work to stay and maintain in this industry. So what is this documentary about? Like, what are we expecting from that? Um, the documentary is about my life growing up in L.A., um, you know, surrounded by the type of environment I grew up in, signing a death row, being around Shug and a lot of great um, artists that really helped pay me into the person I am, I am today. And it's just kind of like, you know, it shows that no matter what your trials and tribulations are, as long as you keep pressing, you can succeed and make something of yourself. So it's a really, really good documentary, and we got a really good soundtrack um, with it as well. That's what's up. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. And we're going, where can we find it at? Like, when is it going to be released on? Like, is it going to be on straight to DVD? Um, No, so I have a deal that I structured with, with Spectrum, Time Warner. It's like on demand, so it'll be on demand. And then for online, it'll be on Amazon Prime as well as Vimeo. And then I have it released in, in a regional um. I have a regional distribution for Los Angeles where it'll be in the theaters for a week. Oh, that's big news. What's up? And this thing here, like, is going to be very interesting to say the least. Just like we know also that you used to, you did a you did a book too, right? Yeah, uh huh. I wrote a book called The Diary of Felicia Choice, which also talks about me growing up, as well as me and signing Death Row Records. So the documentary kind of mirrors the, the book. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and the listeners, call number is one six one nine nine two four zero seven zero three. If y'all trying to get on and get a movie deal, this is the lady you got to talk to, man. <laughs> nah, they can get that I like that. Just the lady you got to talk to. I like that. Say that one more time. This lady you got to talk to, Miss SKG. She's been around the heavy hitters. You want to get on? This is your spot. 
say, Miss SKG, I'm I'm a damn fool. You gotta excuse me. I just get so I get so excited when I have a female around. Number one, I'm half the time I'm the only female around this show on air. But when I get one that's that's doing it like you and that's you know motivating and inspiring people and actually doing something like for real. I just get excited and then I start talking shit and anything and come out my bottle. So I'm just gonna come out and just let you know. Oh no, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like we trying to get people on to open those doors and this is why we appreciate you joining us tonight because we wanna put people more on your contributions to the game. And also let people know that you was also part of a dynasty as well. And speaking of yeah. that, Go ahead, Mama, go. Oh, no, no, go ahead. What was you going to say? Well, I was just going to say just being in that particular dynasty and being a part of it, was there any backlash that you had to deal with that you either weren't ready for, didn't want to be a part of, or embrace, knowing that it was coming? Uh, you know, the biggest thing for me, like, I was a fan of Death Row Records before I ever signed, and I'm sure like anyone back in that era they was running a rap game. So, you know, we was all fans. And I was just a fan of music, um, artists in general. And I was a real big TLC fan. So I think when I got to the label, you know, when I was able to meet Left Eye and me and her not getting along, I think that was one backlash I wasn't ready for because I was such a Left Eye fan. But then you have the politics in the game, and that really grew me up and showed me just because, you know, you admire someone on TV or in an industry doesn't mean that's how they are in real life. So I think my backlash was my beef with left eye. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't want it. Um, you know, I wanted to be cool with her, but that's not how the cards fell. So at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. Man, that sounds like some real talk right there. And I, I honestly was going to ask you a little bit about it, but I, everybody knows Miss Chantilly is not the one to start no shit, and I definitely don't want to be the one that helped carry on the shit. But um, I was going to ask you, possibly, and you don't have to answer this, but when all of that, the, the surrounding beef occurred and, and the, the stuff got out about, you know, personal lives involved, you know, did... I was going to ask you how it affected you, but I can see now it kind of affected just the persona that you had of the person that you ended up meeting being a celebrity. So, I mean, did, did, did it, does it still have long-lasting problems for you now, or is it something that's, like, over and done with? You moved on, TLC, the, the, the rest of the group, TLC, you know, that they moved on, they still, you know, covering resentments against you? I mean, it wasn't never with TLC because I don't know T Boz and Chili besides me being a fan of their music. My thing was, you know, with Left Eye, I didn't realize that I was competition because I came in a in a game real green. I was, you know, wet behind the ears, so I was mostly trying to be friendly with everyone and be cool and wanting to be accepted. And I learned that it wasn't like that, so you know, that's when I kind of had to turn up and just become a totally different person. I couldn't be nice because that was getting taken for granted, you know? And that's when I just kind of learned that this industry is, you know, it's an illusion. It's, it's a lot of fakeness that go on. And it's kind of like a game you have to play. Um, I'm glad you said that because that definitely, you know, opens my eyes. You know, I'm, I've been kind of in a situation. I, I'm always a fan. When I meet people, I don't meet them in, in depth like you probably, you know, have chosen a lot of those. But I, you know, I, I see them in passing. And I always hope that, you know, they are the person you think that they are. But you have realistic views on that. So that's good for the, the viewers to hear, listeners to hear. That is, you know, it's not always what it seems. But definitely rest in peace. So let's die. Much respect, you know. Right. Acts of life right there. And I want to know, too, like, for the listeners, like, what does uh, SKJ stand for? Should Night Girl. Can you explain how you got that name? I kind of read about it, but it's probably best if you explain it. How did you get that name and what does it mean? Um, like, I, I mean, Should Night Girl, I, you know, I was just, Should always said I reminded him 
um, but I act like him. Just I was real, you know, street growing up. I was real wild. I was in the streets in L.A. Um, the first car he asked me what I wanted, I told him an MC on 22. You know, that that was just my style, and he could get the trip off me. And people thought that we were sleeping together, which that never was the case. He was more like a big brother, you know, and he was just laced to me, and he was just like, you act so much like me. And he was like, should night girl. And I was really young, you know. I was this young girl running wild, getting in trouble, you know, going to jail. He having to bail me out, getting in fights, just crazy stuff. And he was just like, should night girl. And it just kind of stuck, and it was SKG. Um, and, and, and the lesson to any little females, younger females out there, that shows you if you can't read in between the lines, you don't have to sleep with everybody to get a position of power or to get what you want. Just put in the work, be yourself, and make it do what it do, you know? That's all it takes. Much respect for that, though. Now, did you record any, like, uh, albums over there that never got released? Yeah, we all did. Um, I redid Black Superman with Code 187 with Hutch. Um, and then I recorded a lot of songs with Hutch because he was my mentor back then and he's still my mentor. So, yeah, we did like a whole album. Man, so is it ever going to get released or is it just going to stay in the background? It's probably in the votes. And, you know, if they feel that I have value, probably they will release it. But you just never know. You know, you never know. But as, as of right now, I don't think they're going to release anything. I still got pictures I'm trying to get for my photo shoots that I took back then. I can't even get those. So I doubt if I'll get some songs released. Yeah, we're going to crack like that, that vote. Right? We're going to crack that vote one day. That's like billions of dollars <laughs> worth of jewels in there. We got to get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it to King E. He's so going to try it. it. Me and Miss me and Miss Chinchilla might have to pull a Martin and Gina dressing all black one night and go kidnap that those reels. Ah, <laughs> get the losses and everything. Oh, all kind of night. <laughs> oh man. Well yeah, that's like a like billions of dollars worth of material in there. We gotta hijack at least a at least a quarter of it. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of stuff you know, in there. <laughs> You know, they say there's a diamond in the rough. It might be about five diamonds in there. We don't know. We ain't going to know until we find out, though. Let's get it. And we ain't going to, and you know what, though, if we do did it, we're not going to bootleg SKJ's album. We're going to make sure you get the proceeds. <laughs> okay. Oh, <All right. laughs> We just want to see you damn it. We're going to go snatch it and give it to you and let you do what it do. We just letting y'all know. And you know, with me uh, being around him around that time period, is there like a perception that people give that you felt was wrong of him? Like, you know, they, 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 they um, just judge him or? You know, a lot of people ask me that. I just feel uh, like, you know, if you're from the West Coast, especially from the West Coast, from Compton, from L.A., from our West Coast culture, they know what it is. They know what time it is. Like, she took care of a lot of people. He took care of a lot of families. He helped a lot of people. He helped a lot of people at, at, at the time when a lot of community leaders within the black community wasn't even helping their community. You know, he put kids through college. He gave Christmas drives, all type of stuff. And at the end of the day, he's not bad how the media paint him. He just probably made a couple of bad choices. You know, but how they try to act like he's just this monster. He's not like that. And people in L.A. that's really from our West Coast culture, they know it's that. You know, it's just sad that the media give him this negative image when he's not as bad as they try to make him seem. He was just as big as we all know he was. <laughs> that's a huh? big dude. I said, I, he's just a big dude physically. Like, we know he is, so I guess people use that plus the persona that the media suits, and they're like, yeah, he's a monster. They get timid. I mean, yeah, yeah, but the way that they, the image that they put, that they portray is not who he 100% is. Like, he's not all bad how they try to make it seem. Yeah. 
You know, Suge has helped a lot of people, a lot of people. Well, you know, half of the media wouldn't even be around if they didn't blow things out of proportion half the time and only focus on the bad just so they could get the juicy stories out. So, I mean, media itself, you can't really believe half of what you hear from it, and you can't let that paint the picture of the person that you're trying to get to know. I tell people that all the time. Don't try and get to know a celebrity through the media and think that you like partners with them when you meet them once. It's not like that. Yeah, and, and another like thing is should make sure that people respected the West Coast and not just keeping it real. Like, artists couldn't just run around and do what they do now back then. You know, it's no one that really makes sure that our coast is respected. That's the same with the South, the East Coast. You got to respect wherever you're at at that time. And it's all type of rappers that come out here and be very disrespectful now. And no one tries mm-hmm. to hold it down, probably game, you know, but he had never do what should did. So. Yeah, yeah you and this, this, is, this is the rest of the great reason why we love having people like you on our show is because it gives people a backdrop on the history. Like, they don't understand the impact that he left on the coast and he put a lot of people on. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, he helped a lot of people, and you know, they don't, the, the media never shows the background. Like you said, he gave Christmas stuff out. You know, they never show the, the, the good in people. And it's always good to have somebody like you that's close to them that can bring the, the, the good to light. You know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, if we were just listening to the media, all we know is the intimidation or whatever they wanted to portray it to be. But they would never get footage of him out doing right for the community, helping people out. So it's definitely good that somebody close to him that cares about, you know, getting, painting a real picture of him actually comes out and, and speaks on it. So that's that's always a plus for, for people that get the, the wrong image painted, you know. Right, right. Exactly. So with this with this documentary, who's who you who do you get on the soundtrack? Like who can we look forward to hearing? Um, we're still working right now on it. I have right now I'm recording my single with Keith Robinson. He plays Tupac um manager in All Eyes on Me movie. So I was just in the studio with him. I just reached out to CeeLo Green and a couple of other artists. So I'll know who's fully on my soundtrack, hopefully in like a week or two. That's what's up. And then we get the exclusives. Just come back and hit us up and let us know. There you oh, go. for we sure I that. will, most definitely. So, yeah, for sure I will. Yeah, we trying to make you know, sure I'm we get, a, that five star, get, get that five-star number. No, no I'll, I'll definitely so reach out to you guys and give you guys an exclusive. That's what's up. We're trying to make sure you get those Oscars. Best documentary, best hip-hop documentary. We're trying to make sure you get it all. I um, appreciate that. <laughs> And listeners, do y'all hear read between them lines? We said so. <laughs> I'm crazy. I know. Man. So, so who? So this is what I want to know too: is who inspired you to really like you know one day pick up a pen and really start getting into the booth and laying these rhymes like the way you lay them? You know, I used to um, the first rap I seen when I was little was um. Salt and Pepper, I seen them on, I don't know if it was Yo MTV Raptor or something, but I was just so amazed <laughs> at Salt and Pepper. And my brother used to go to jail a lot when I was younger. And every time I go visit him with my mother, he always had a rap for me. And at this time, I was like nine or 10 years old. And from there, you know, I just loved to rap. And then I started writing my own lyrics. So I would say, like, honestly, my older brother probably inspired me the most. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's but back then it wasn't that many people It wasn't kids rapping back then So while all my cousins was outside Playing, riding their bikes and stuff I'd just be in the house riding raps And they thought I was crazy And you didn't really have So many rappers how it is now You know And what you tell them now, picture you rolling, huh Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Plus wrote your own bars too Man, <laughs> Ghost Riders hanging so, in. 
Huh, for real. Hey, but that's a good question. You you write all your lyrics? Do you freestyle them? Do you write them and then rap them? Like, do you do both? Oh, let me see if she's there. You there, it's KJ? Man, ball talk better get this thing together because we sitting here chopping it up and y'all y'all ruining the vibe. I'll tell you, Block Talk, we're going to switch on y'all ass. Keep playing. We're going to move on to the bigger end of the things, goddammit. And it's going to be your fault. We're going to because we already going to have brunch with the Trumps. <laughs> hey, Eric said that. That was King Eric the Ruler. That was not Candace Chinchin. No. Ain't no Chinchin. Ain't no Candy Ray. Ain't no Dominic Enforcer. That's fuck Trump. Nah. Block Talk fighting on that. Hey, don't. Hey, it's fit if it, it, they give it fifteen mil on the table, I'm gonna take at least ten. Hello? See, I'll take number five and we hey. we gone. I ain't endorsing shit. Hey mama, you back. Hello. <laughs> hey you hey. Okay, yeah, can yeah, you, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even remember what I asked anymore. This fool said Trump. No, I uh, heard you say, do I freestyle or do I write my rap, but yeah. then the phone went out. Oh, okay, yeah. So can you answer that, please? I freestyle, but I really like to write. I like to sit there and really think about what I'm a rap about. Like, I like to feel the beat out. You know, I'm just, when it comes to that, I'm kind of old school. Huh. And that's another thing that's so impressive with you and artists in your era. When you're a female getting into the game back then, it was a lot harder to get in and get in clean. You know what I'm saying? Then, like, these days it's a lot easier not to say it's so easy for females, but it, y'all, people like you, and especially Stop Pepper, the Queen Latifah, the Brat, y'all pave ways for people to, to, number one, even feel like they can do it and have the confidence, but to see that it could work if you just believe and you keep it pushing. So, that's, I mean, you you are truly inspiring just on the on the simple fact that you know what I'm saying. A, a, a black lady that has been doing it so long, you had the motivation. You you wanted to do it for so long, did it, and had some longevity in it. And now you're not only just you know doing your artistic part in the in the musical part, but now you are in books. You're doing a movie. Like, you branching off, you know what I'm saying? And the entrepreneurship in you is feeding a lot of people. I know it feeds my soul, and I'm pretty sure anybody else that's heard what you're saying or, or has read about what you're doing would definitely be inspired, especially a female, because, like you said, it's, it's discouraging to females to a point if they're not ready to deal with all of the shit that comes with it. Politics and red tape for male or female is already a bit. So to, to dive in and do it, that's like, that's some, some props for your ass. I mean, yeah, because, see, I came in the game at, at a young, I was so young when I came in the game. So when I see other rappers now, it's like, oh, okay, and I'm in my 30s, you know, I'm 34. I'll tell my age, I'm 34. So when I came in the game, I was like 15, 14. I was very, very young. Young. You know, and so to be 34. No, keep going. Yeah, to be 34. Oh, no, no. I'm just saying to be 34 now. Then I looked and I looked at Nicki Minaj. She's 34 as well, but she went so far, you know? And it's just like you, but my life and other female rappers' lives, our lives are different. I'm a mother, you know? So I have other responsibilities. And it's just like sometimes you have to have a backup plan. Even if you're doing music, always have some type of backup plan because your success might not be leveled to the next person's success, you know? Definitely. Definitely. And that's, that's just kind of how, how I look at things. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the game's changing these days. Dudes wearing skirts and, and, and bumpers, what the hell are them things called? I don't even know no more. I don't know what they call them. But yeah, like, it's very different. It, you know, it's, it's very different, you know, but... <laughs> it is what it is at this point. Sorry about that. Y'all had to take care of some things with the studio. 
I might have to just, a matter of fact, I might have to suge night some of these blog talk workers here. Y'all, y'all messing up the flow here, but we we holding it down though. Look, and I'm sitting here talking, and my shit on mute. All I was saying was though, I don't know if the dudes trying to compete with the females, but look here. At the end of the day, they already had the gun. Room. Now they want to take the modeling industry. They want to take the fashion port. Apparently, they want to take our lipstick and shit next to me. Supposed to say it's gangster. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, it's very, very different now. It's very different. It's a weird time. And then the lyrics. Like, the lyrics have changed up. It used to be lyrics that tell the story. Now it's just lyrics to see how how deep your voice go, how high-pitched your voice go, how many words you can say at one time. Nigga ain't said shit yet, but it's been too many to the song. I'm just saying, you were back when the shit was really an art. You know, so not to say that they don't have people that still making art, artistic music these days, but a lot of the shit, they just, they wilding out, and you got to just have a good beat to it. I'm just saying, I'm talking to it. My rant's yeah. over. So, so what, keeps you, what keeps you inspired to do this? Because I see a lot of dudes, they... A lot of artists, they throw in the towel, and just, you know, they would have just be like, forget all this. We just going to go back to being painters or do construction work. We we do it rapping. <laughs> so we, what keeps you motivated to stay in the game and do what you do? Um, It's people. It, it's people that really keep me motivated, people that just hit me. You know, I have people that hit me from the U.K., from Japan, that tell me that fans. It's really just people that believe in me, you know, and it's been times when I wanted to throw in the towel, you know, but I just kind of keep pressing. You know, people don't understand if one person believes in you, that's motivation and make you keep going. Huh. So do you do out of town, like out of international shows and stuff like that? Do I do what? International shows, you said people hit me from Japan and all over. Do you go out and actually do the shows in No, you know what? No, I don't do that right now. I have so much going on um, with my with my other businesses. I have a talk show. I have just so many things going on. I, I can't do that right now. And how I'm setting up my career, I'm strategically planning everything out. When the time permits, I will go. I'm hoping I'll be able to go like in 2018 or 2019. That's what's up. Huh. So what's the name of the talk show that you're working on? See, now you're trying it's to go out there. And sh- <laughs> it's called Girlfriends <laughs> and Champagne. <laughs> Say it one more time because I was laughing. I'm sorry. Oh, Say no, it it's fine. It's called Girlfriends and Champagne. It's a talk show, and it's also a gifting suite I do, BET, and then for the Grammy Awards that I do out here in Los Angeles. Huh. She just keeps throwing surprises out there. Oh, I do this too. Oh, I do this too. God damn it, I do this. I'll take you off. <laughs> oh, I mean, you got to be the jack of, you have to be the jack of all trades and you got to master many of them. So, you know, you always got to uh-huh. hustle, especially in L.A. Man, because yeah, that is a, that's an that's a city you gotta you gotta work hard in to get some kind of exposure over there and some knowledge, huh? Yeah, cause everybody yeah most in LA definitely is somebody. You really do. <laughs> everybody, yeah. you're either somebody or trying to be somebody or pretending to be somebody because it's like very oversaturated. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the same way it is in Atlanta too. Yeah, I heard it's the worst that. in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in It's the worst in Atlanta it's, it's, I was going to say it's the worst in Atlanta Because you know you have people that will give you Like one guy he gave me a car Saying he a lawyer he a model A rapper and a producer I said <laughs> Yes <laughs> And out there it's like You know the little kid rap The mom rap the grandmother rap The grandpa like it's just everybody Out there doing music yeah, well, like I said, I mean, I don't, I mean, mm. you know, I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, the grandma, I'm family, on the mic, <laughs> <laughs> and then Lil Tay, he gonna be a producer, it's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So, so which city is more receptive to, to 
everything in general that you're doing, just out of curiosity, LA or Atlanta or both in um, They're both. They're both, but I'll also be in Vegas a lot. So I would say Vegas, Atlanta, and LA. Damn, she say she's nationwide, y'all. Y'all hear that? She say fuck with her. <laughs> you probably can't, but I'm telling you, challenge yourself, damn it. And I be telling cats to hit that line and chop it up with her because it's like y'all come to us about wanting to deal and stuff. She the one, she might could get you on. You get that Oprah money, my G. <laughs> huh. So, and that brings me to another question: Is 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 it? I would say, is it easy? Do you have a lot of guys approaching you or more females approaching you or willing to work with you? Is it easier to work with the guys or the females? Because I know sometimes guys are, like, not trying to get put on by a female or, you know, competing more with a female than a female is. Um, I prefer to work with the guys. Even though you got to kind of take your respect, demand your respect, I still prefer to work with the guys because it's less BS. You know, girls are... Caddy drama. I don't have time for that. You know, I rather just, you know, kind of work with the guys because they know what it is. Like as long as you get it out the way with them trying to hit on you and sleep with you, you let them know I'm not about that. I'm strictly about my business. After that, you don't have no problem. I find I, I find out with girls is more. You know, like it, it's just always something. It's drama. It's she's jealous. It, it's just crazy stuff. So I really prefer to work with guys. Like get pop Atlanta in that bitch every day, huh? Huh? <laughs> I say it feels like hip hop in Atlanta every day of when you do them. No, girl, it, huh? yeah, that's that's really how it is. I mean, especially <laughs> out here in LA, it's like everyone's in competition to be the baddest bitch. It, it's crazy. So, and it seems like females don't give props when props are due to other females. Like I would think they should. You know, but I'm I'm the type of female like you. I'd rather be around a bunch of dudes because it's less shit. But in my mind, how I think life and reality is supposed to go, you would think that a, a female would boost another female up if they deserve it instead of trying to tear them down and be so competitive. But I guess that's not real reality. The crabs in a bucket. Like, there's enough money. There's, a lot, there's enough to go around. Everybody can eat. Right. Just, no, that's a of, true. A of, yeah, a lot of egos and chatty patty going around, and nobody wants to come together and build. That's why I think the game is kind of like in the, you know, it's structured very weird because a lot of folks that had the ball dropped the ball pretty much. Yep. And, and we kind of lost yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. Culture. We kind of lost that cultural identity. I mean, that's my personal opinion. And if anybody want to call up and debate that, the call number is one six one nine nine two four zero seven zero three. Y'all playing around? I got that Nate. I got that Nate dog waiting. Somebody call up. And <laughs> <laughs> what kind of piece of chain you got waiting? <laughs> oh yeah, I got, got Paul Pacino. Living? Paul Pacino's fake chain right here. You know, <laughs> you, ain't gonna catch, you ain't gonna catch no rash on your neck right now. I want him to call up and get it. So you be okay. <laughs> Thought I'd do a little He's plug a out there to keep our listeners. <laughs> That's what we do it off the cuff radio. You never know where this might go. I even got a vest. I even went, I'm gonna say this though. Even though we knew SKG was gonna be on the show, I got a vest on. You <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Damn fool, boy. Damn fool. So it gets it gets crazy over here because you never know where the conversation going to detour. But I want to ask you though. Um, so, what is your thoughts about how the music game then came into more technology based in terms of streaming versus CDs? Um, I think it's good because they give more artists opportunity to get more exposure, and it gives them different outlets. Like, you know, it, it's just with streaming, you can get blog placements, you can get online interviews, you know, you can get video downloads. So many things come with that. So I think it's a good one overall. Does it have an impact on your money, though? Um, 
now that sound exchange is in place, you know, because they help collect royalties for artists who um, who have streaming revenue, I don't think so. Yeah, I believe That's it depends, depends on how you monetize it. Once you figure yeah, out how to monetize it, you can eat. You can eat for life off ringtones tones and streaming. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. true. So do you still have to well, do you personally you know, still go out? Yeah. I ain't huh? I ain't mean to cut you off because you know blog talk you gotta act up. I ain't know sometimes I can't hear y'all when y'all be talking, so sometimes it just cuts in, but I had to ask you this though, you know, this is for chatty patty purposes. Like is there anything <laughs> from the anything from the book that you wanna drop, like, you know, just to give us a hint? On what to expect Like one story Craziest story <laughs> Is he like, still with us? I don't know I, I think it dropped her I think Blog Talk is doing get, this shit on purpose Every time it get good The motherfuckers cut us off At, at, let, me see what's going on. let me see what's going on here. They bugging. Like, we store in the. Yeah, she got Maybe they need she some money. The Maybe they need yeah. money. Fix some shit. They, they need to twerk some teeth out. You ain't lying. So, you know, we was trying to get. We was going to get into the mix of it. And the next thing you know, it just drops. Hold on, we trying to see if she can call back. So we was getting to the nitty gritty here. You got to get at least one of those questions out. You know what? I think that documentary is going to be live because she got a lot of stuff on a personal level going on, stuff that just is knowledgeable. Like I said, it could be inspiring and motivate. But then, you know, just from the little background I read of what could be in there, it might have a little juicy stuff going on, some topics and stuff. That, that might be a damn good documentary right there. I'm just hey, saying. Ron, I need my front. I need my front row seat. You I know, need to and we trying to get a little. We trying to get a little, a little summary of a juicy topic or something. And Blog Talk said, "No, fuck you. Y'all are not finna do it today." Hey, y'all, they be like, "Look, y'all ain't getting this. Y'all gonna have to. Y'all gonna have to wait till the book drop." Yeah, that's like oh, Blog Talk acting like they got some money in this or something. You need to. I'm gonna need to know Blog Talk's uh, little secret. Not what it do, man. Yeah, that's not the business at all. They trying to hoodwink us, bamboozle. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, and it was, I, I could feel that if, if she were able to answer that question, we would be knee deep in some good juicy shit right now. I'm just saying. Oh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta get the answers. Like we're not going out with <laughs> Kanye. We gonna get the answer, Sway. You gonna get the answer like you got that damn footage, huh? Oh, while we're on the topic and nobody is on the phone to like as far as the guest, I think it would just be nice to mention we were talking a lot of shit last week because you know the stories we see, we hear. That's what we do. We just put it out there. But we also have to go and say on the other side of the coin that there are a few videos with people reporting that that was not true, that Wack did not get his ass whooped. But just for the record, I saw a lot more stories and videos saying that he got his ass whooped than he did not. So, but since, you know, we are a radio show that is being fair on both sides, I have to just mention the fact that there were like two or three as opposed to the other 15 to 20 that I saw that said, you know, he, he didn't get into it. So we would like to still see the footage. If we can get the footage and we could clarify the whole situation, that would be great. Just saying. Exactly. That's all we want. Just a peek. And we're glad that <laughs> they squashed snippet. the issue. We're glad that they squashed the situation because it could have got deadly. Did they squash That's it? Great Is that? Yeah. Cool. Because, you know, hey, over here, 
You know, it's, it's cool to know what's going on. You know, but at the end of the day, like we said many a times, shit that starts on social media and ends up in the streets can definitely end up in the grave soon enough. And we don't want that shit. We're not endorsing that shit. We're not promoting that shit. But, you know, we got to speak on the shit if it happened, Captain. But it's definitely good if the shit gets squashed. And it was just some shit to talk about for a little bit, but nothing that ends up in some, you know, permanent type situation. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, because it was going to turn L.A. into a battle royal. A lot of people didn't even know. Man, and then with with the shit that, you know, with the pop shit coming out and, and that beat stuff stemming over words about pop, that could have re resurrected a whole shit West Coast, East Coast type stupid shit that we don't really want to see ever again because it ended up with two lives lost that were legendary lives. You know, at the end of the day, it don't matter who didn't like who, you know, as as fans, we can't get their good music anymore and their parents, you know, their family, their friends lost two friends and, and, and loved ones. So, you know, it's it, I don't think beef should ever be that serious, especially when it started over wax and over words. You know, it, you know, it, it just it shouldn't get that crucial anymore because we see what the end results could be. So I'm definitely glad that they squashed it. Much respect to both sides. Yeah, because that was a situation that 